Welcome to those who have joined us via live stream, and welcome back to those who are gathering here in Billings. It is now my pleasure to invite to the podium Robbie Youngkin, President of the Montana Alpha Chapter and incoming National Western Region Vice President, who has known this year's Ruby Award recipient for many years. Robbie is a colleague and a friend who could speak well to the many accomplishments of Dr. Getting. Please join me in welcoming Robbie back to the stage. Thank you. Montana truly has the most valuable treasure in this year's ESP Ruby Award winner, Dr. Marsha Getting. She has been involved in extension for nearly 50 years, but she has shared herself with Montana for 46 of them. You can all read on the inside of that flyer. Isn't that impressive? Wow. And so it's easy to list all of Marsha's accomplishments. How about the part that in 2022, she reached nearly 5,000 people with 50 live and virtual programs? Impressive. Um, she utilizes a variety of different delivery methods to reach those people of Montana. She hosts webinars. She uses media, TV, radio, newspaper. And she has more than one educational series that are ongoing. She also designed and conducted a study at home class. Marcia is truly the epitome of extension outreach. She has become an estate planning expert, not just in our state, but nationwide. She serves on an impressive number of professional committees and boards, including the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis in their Helena branch, the State Bar of Montana, and the Montana Bankers Association. It's quite a feat when lawyers reach out to our own extension, Marsha, to clarify estate law. And yet, it is, it's an incredibly impressive list of accomplishments and highlights. But I would like to share with you the Marsha that we know and love. You can't help but be inspired by her infectious enthusiasm or her work in extension. Our Marsha has a passion for Alzheimer and dementia issues, as well as any geriatric issues involved with aging. She's active in educational programming and has created her own footprint in her original program using understanding Alzheimer's using storybooks. This program uses storybooks to help children understand and cope with difficult issues surrounding dementia. You should Google it. It's impressive and impactful. As I'm sure you will learn, Marsha also has a passion for wildflowers. She makes and sells cards to benefit the Alzheimer's Association. These cards, however, serve another powerful purpose. Marsha sends them to us. For many, they are the most treasured form of recognition. She encourages new agents and experienced agents alike. She praises work accomplishments, celebrates successes, shares heartbreaks, or sends a happy birthday greeting. Marcia recognizes potential and gives of herself to nurture talents of every extension professional. She offers to partner in programs of interest. She encourages us to step out of our comfort zone, sometimes with a gentle nudge, or if needed, a large shove. She's selfless in her commitment to extension and to the people of Montana. But most importantly, she is our friend. I am honored to present this year's ESP Ruby Award winner, Dr. Marcia Getting. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Montana. We are delighted that you're here. And I got to thank Robbie for such a nice introduction. I wondered, 
golly, people seem to like me. And that's kind of cool, you know? It is indeed. So if I could have my slides up, what we're going to do is uh, share with you kind of the things I like to do, why I like to do them, and it's really something to be up here because usually I do an educational program. So let's just wait, make the slides, they're there. Yoo-hoo. Hi. I don't see anything here. They're up? Well, I want to see it here. <laughs> that way you can think I memorized everything, you know? Okay, well, while they're doing that, um, I got to admit, when I received information about winning this Ruby Award, I, I went, wait a minute, that's me? I have been nominated for something that I would have never even thought that I'd be nominated for. So I do want to thank all my, my MSU colleagues for nominating me, and then I also would like to thank the National Epsilon Sigma Phi, because thank you, I am indeed honored. And if you want to know who the past recipients are, that's the first thing I did, because I thought, oh, I'd like to know who have received this in the past. And what I discovered is there's university presidents, there's department heads, there's famous people. And here I am, little old Marcia, from Houghton, Kansas, southwest corner of the state. Uh, and I get to be up here and share some neat things. Now, already, some of you have stole my plan because I wanted to recognize it's Leroy Luff. So Leroy, go ahead and stand up again. We might as well clap twice. He received the Ruby Award when he was in Oregon. Yay, Leroy. And then we have Lila. You know what? When I saw she received it, I didn't know. It was in 2003. She is with, was with Oregon at the time. So I called her up and said, can I use your picture in this? And that was the first time that we had talked in over 40 years. So next time she comes to Bozeman, because she's a granny now, what's going to happen is we're going to get together and celebrate Montana. So Lila, she's, she's watching. Hi, Lila. <laughs> Hi. Glad to see you. Okay. Now the other thing that was in the email, it said, you were invited to give the prestigious Ruby lecture. Right. I don't lecture. What I do is present educational programs on estate planning, retirement planning, Montana medical care savings accounts. And my husband is saying, you're sounding a little bit whiny. <laughs> you know, get up there and tell people how honored that you are. And I am. And Gary, hi. <laughs> he wasn't able to be here. It's a five-letter word. I know four-letter words, but this is a five-letter word called COVID. Okay, so he got it last week, and uh, I'm okay. You know, today I got to take the mask off, and so I'm very thrilled. So hi, Gary. Okay, so I went to ask topic advice from Robbie. You know, she's up here. She's kind of a leader. She's going to be the Western Region representative, and she says, be you. And I had a lot of people last night say that as well. And I thought, okay, I can do that. But what I need is a topic that I'm going to give this lecture on. So I decided to go to the planning committee. And there they are. We've got two stars for the people that were in charge of all of us, getting us organized, you know, Ronnie and Allison. And I said, okay, what topic? And what did they say? Make it motivating and exciting. Well, that still didn't give me a topic. So I went to some other members of the committee, and I said, okay, Catherine, Julie, Jesse, help. What should I do? And what did they say? They had two suggestions for me, and that was really great. Please don't embarrass us. <laughs> and don't be boring. Okay, moving along. Finally, I got to our last three. 
And we've got Bernie over there. Bernie's one of our life members. And I thought, surely, you know, she used to go to all the NEAFCS meetings. She retired several years ago, and we still glad she joined us. And what, and Mandy and Haley. So what did they say? Please don't put people to sleep, because after all, you're on after lunch. Right, okay. So they also gave me some serious advice. And of course, they wanted me to utilize some of my teaching techniques. And I thought, I can do that. I like to teach. And be you, of course. And then use your wildflowers. Now, you might say, well, why would you even think about wildflowers? Marcia Getting is a family economic specialist. She's not a botanist. Well, there's a story there. OK, Gary and I, my hubby, we're going from Montana to Kansas to see my folks. And that takes two and a half days and really is a long trip. So I kind of like to do projects when I'm in the car. And one of the things I was doing is putting my wildflower cards in a doohickey so that I could put plastic on it. And there was really a double reason for this, because my mom really enjoyed the wildflowers. So I would, and by the way, she had Alzheimer's. So she thought it was great that I could remember the names of these. And so I'm talking to Gary and I'm saying, you know, I'm really worried. I think I've been here too long, I've been giving estate planning too long, and uh, I'm boring. And so I made my note cards, and as I was doing that, I thought about the names. And I thought, hey, uh -huh. Gary, of course, said, please don't tell any jokes. Um, ha ha, you don't remember the punchline. <laughs> well, and he's right, you know, you can't complain when somebody's right. So I had an idea. Why don't I use the names of my wildflowers, incorporate them into my estate planning meetings, and see what happens with my audience? So I did, and you can't believe the fun it is, because you talk about the kissing fairy slippers, and I can talk about joint tenancy in married couples, and say that is not a substitute for a will. What that is is you need to still write a will, because you never know. Both of you might die at the same time. Aren't I popular? You both might die at the same time. Yeah. OK. And then how about parents? I tell people, don't monkey around and put your kid's name on your house, on your checking account. Now, wait a minute. I can't say that because I'm giving legal advice. What I would say is you might want to look at the potential consequences of putting your kid's name on your stuff. They could go in and and withdraw your money. You can want to sell your house because you met this new guy down the block and your daughter says, no, mom, I don't think that's appropriate. Okay, so it's fun. And then look at this one, the mountain death cameras. So what do you talk about? <laughs> Payable on death designations, transfer on death registrations for your stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, and many of you states are like Montana, you have a transfer on death deed or a beneficiary deed. And the neat thing is you avoid probate. You leave more for your heirs. That's cool, that's cool. And then I have Richardson Geranium. I really remember going out to the Custer uh, National Forest and it was after a rain. And Gary said, I ain't getting out. And I said, I am, because it's really neat. This is Richardson Geranium and that reminds me of Granny Richardson. Now, Granny Richardson is really concerned, like many of my Montana audiences, she is concerned about the Montana inheritance tax and the federal estate tax. And you can imagine how relieved she is when I say, you don't have to pay an inheritance tax. Montana hasn't had one since 2001. And the federal estate tax, well, you can't be probably there if you're working for extension, because this year you can have $12.92 million, and you don't have to pay a federal estate tax. And I can see you're relieved, aren't you? Gosh, <laughs> don't have to worry about that one. OK. Now, President Crisato. Whoops. I'm going to go back. President Crisato, she had her topic this morning about 
extension's um, superpower. And you know, she is sincere as she came across. She is a wonderful president, and I'm going to tell you some more later. But anyway, I have the habit of getting carried away. Because when I saw her talking about the Morrell Act, what I wanted to do is run up here and say, hey, would you like to use my Morrell mushroom <laughs> for a slide to introduce your topic? But, you know, I didn't ask her that because I figured she's already organized. This is my studio. In other words, when Gary and I are out taking photographs, we take them in place. There is no way that I want to destroy a wildflower just because I want a picture of it. Now, you know, 10 years ago, that was real easy. Get down on the ground and take a picture. And now, I'm thinking about getting a zoom lens. So I can just stand up here and zoom in on it. But now I have two umbrellas, I have a different camera, and I have fun finding flowers. Now, here's an opportunity. You Montanans with the legacy clip stand up. And I am, now, Montana people, zip your lips, okay? You ESP people have an opportunity to tell me what the name of this flower is. So what you have to do, however, to get a legacy clip is you've got to stand up. Shout out what name you think this flower is. Stand up and shout. Okay, this is called participatory <laughs> items. Okay, I, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you. Moo. Moo. Anybody got it? Yes. A what? <laughs> Give her a, a, a thing. Oh, okay, anybody else? You're standing. Good, good. Okay, these people are really close. The rest of you had a chance to get a legacy clip, but you didn't do it. I'll give you, oh, yes, ma'am. A longhorn, no, but give her a clip. Okay, what is is, is a steer's head. Yeah, cute little flower, comes out uh, right after the snow melts. Find them typically in Yellowstone National Park. So what I want to do is steer you towards my five reasons why I think that extension is the bestest profession out there, okay? Love it. Now, bestest. I bet there's a few out there leaning to your friend and saying, you know, I bet that's not even in the dictionary. <laughs> it is. I was actually shocked, but it was on, online. Means the very best, best of the best, or better than the best, and that describes extension to me. Why would I still be working for extension for 49, okay, 49 years? But Jerry Marks over there, who you've always already recognized, Jerry has a building named after him in Missoula, Montana, the Jerry Marks Exploratory Center. Now, I don't think they're gonna name anything after Marsha Getty. But Jerry, 53 years, 54, 54 years with extension. And you know, he's got more years than I do. So it's him, then it's me. So he can't retire yet. Okay, so I wanna steer you to the first reason why I think extension is the bestest. And it has to do with our mission. Because we have an educational mission with impact at three levels. And I noticed Cody and President Cruzado talked about the tripartite doodah. Okay, Marcia Getting can't use those big words. So what I'm thinking about is our mission, and what I'm using is a flower I found this summer. It is called a white mule's ear, and if you look real close, there are three buds in that that all grew together. And I tell Gary, yo, I've got my federal, state, and county for that's what extension is about. Now, I admit sometimes we at the state level think those people at the federal level don't know what the heck they're doing. And I'm sure at the county level, sometimes you don't think that those specialists know what the heck they're doing either. But we all come together to 
do programming, and that's what makes it exciting. And by the way, for the first time I noticed, these three that are hooked together, as in Siamese twins, when you lift them up, even the stems are all together. So if somebody is a botanist, I want to see you afterwards to find out what causes that, because it's really cool. Okay, so we look at our mission. So I went to the web and I said, what does NIFA say? And you know, NIFA, I kind of, it's there. They have their thing, talking about communities, nutrition, food safety, emergencies, environment, you know, that, and that's good. But I decided to go to some of the states, because you see, as states, we like to do our own thing, don't we? So we got Arkansas here, and they're strengthening communities and family, and they put the research in there, and that's cool. And then we have Wyoming. They have their mission as lifelong learning. We're empowering people to make decisions. We want to enhance their quality of life. Cool. Colorado. I like this one because I thought, I could remember how to say this one. You know, because it's short. Solve problems. Develop skills. Yay, Colorado. Utah. Okay, Utah talks about improving families. So you see, some of these don't act like it's all agriculture. I know agriculture is our foundation, but we're reaching more than agriculture when we do our family programs, our 4-H programs, our community development. It's so exciting, all the things that are going on. So my wildflower reflection for this one is keep in mind our three-way partnership. And then as an individual, ask yourself, when is the last time that you uh, thought about your own professional mission? Okay. Now I want to steer you to impact. Okay, we hear a lot about impact. And the flower I'm going to use for that is the Explorer's Gentian. I want to explore impact with you. Now, Dr. Cody Stone, after we got shut down March 20th, 2020, started doing director dialogues. And that was really cool because the first time we've got our leader, he's there doing this WebEx business that we found about, and he ends it this way. And he did it earlier. He ends each session with appreciation for the impact that we have on people and places of Montana. Every time he says that. And you know, I kind of went, yeah, da 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 da. <laughs> and, and then I thought about it. And I go, that is so right. Because we think of the people that are out there that we're working with. But the people are also all of you, it's our colleagues. It's Montanans are my family this time. I don't have a relative in Montana. Gary's not here. So my family are my extension people. They are very important to me. But there's also people out there that surprise you. And one of the things I started early in my career was a feel-good file. The reason I did that is, you know, all of us have ups and downs. And I've had my share of those. But when somebody takes time out to handwrite me a note, I just put it in a file. Here is one that a lady sent me who is half blind. And she was talking about how great you are. You're awesome. Boy, that felt good. Not only did she send this, but she knitted me a dishcloth. Now, you know, I know that's probably not, but I almost cried. Here is this lady that was so appreciative for our webinars that we were doing on Fabulous Fridays that she did this, and just for fun, even though she can't see very well, she sends me snowflakes. Now, how can you not love some of your audience when they do that? It, it's just wonderful. Okay, so there, Cody. Then, I think of us, every day we have a purpose. 
you know, maybe we're researching content for this Alzheimer magazine that we're going to do. We, we think about what is an effective way to reach an audience. And now it's more than doing a live program. We can do webinars. There's these things I don't understand. Uh, Twitter. Facebook. Do I have a Facebook account? No. I don't know how. I'll get around to it someday. But I really will. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do. And we're working with our clientele for impact. Well, I think what we've got here is a little bit of impact because, hold on. Impact. Look at that. Here we've got Tennessee. They've got somebody to put their sign on their, their barn. Isn't it cool? Then we've got uh, Tennessee. They're giving us numbers. And, you know, they talk 22 million. Golly, you just heard we got a million not too long ago. So we're excited when we get 500 people out or attend. We've even got uh, Arkansas. And, you know, again, we've got the numbers. And so what are we hearing now? You know, well, I learned early on why you need to have impact. Back in the 80s, I wrote a study at home course on estate planning, you know, and uh, 17,000 people. Now, that's a lot of folk to take something in Montana. But we were milling those out once a week for a series of 10 weeks. So start adding the dollars together. And we got to annual conference, and my director calls, it wasn't Cody, he said, estate planning program causes a deficit. And I was shattered, I'll admit. That was one of those down days. That's why I have a feel-good file. And I thought, you know, I need to figure out, if we're going to spend that kind of money, what are people doing as a result of the program? And so there was Don Dillman. That was back in the day when he'd written this book. He's now updated it to doing internet surveys and some of those kinds of things. I mean, whoa, what a really neat man. So I decided to pattern an evaluation tool after him, after his ideas. So I was able to report then just a few of these things. 38% made an appointment with an attorney as a result of the course. 46% reviewed their beneficiary de designations on their life insurance. You see, they're taking actions, okay? How about discussing estate planning with their spouse? And of course, now I would need to, well, spouse is okay, or partner. And 62% reviewed their existing wills. And last but not least, they were reviewing their titles. Because that's where I start in Montana. You need to know what your title to your property is. Because there's an estate plan that the state already has for you if you don't write your will, if you don't have a trust, and that kind of stuff. So I decided to share this with the chair of the section on taxation and probate. And lo and behold, I did not know that he was the dean of estate planning in Montana. He's just a guy that I'd been working with on the section. Well, he wrote a letter to the State Bar Board of Trustees. And what happened is he shared this specific thing. Because there were people out, or attorneys out there saying extension is trying to take the place of attorneys. No, that's not what we were doing. He said business is being created because of this course. And of course, I didn't want to say that, but he could. And we got rid of the naysayers. Ah, it was great because we have worked together for a long time. Okay, so we have impact. We can do numbers, but let's, let's think about, as we're doing a program, what do I want people to do as a result? And I know part of it's change attitude and thinking, and we have Procraska cues, something or other change. Okay, but ultimately, if we can get them to take action. So here we have North Dakota State University, and what they did was a health wise for guys, and look at that, 74% tend to, are gonna do self-checks because of cancer, okay? Drink Water Georgia. You know, they were trying some text messages. I'm still trying to figure out how to figure them on my phone. Robbie just keeps saying Marsha, but she's gonna train me, okay? 
So explore what people did as a result of your program. How about the second reason? Extension. It's our creed. You see, I didn't think of that a lot till I started working on this speech, and I decided my laughing or singing pinstamans, and what are they doing? They are saying the creed. They're talking the creed. And we had Robbie read that, and we said it ourselves. And, you know, I looked up what a creed is. It's a statement of shared beliefs, okay? We're a shared community. We're, I, you know, I feel this room of all of you are doing not the same things, but things to impact people. So Robbie did it this morning, and right now I saw a different way that Kansas did it when I went on the web. So here we go, I hope. I believe in the people and their hopes, their aspirations and their faith, in their right to make their own plans and arrive at their own decisions, in their ability and power to enlarge their lives and plan for the happiness of those they love. I believe that education, of which extension is an essential part, is basic in stimulating individual initiative, self-determination and leadership. That these are the keys to democracy and that people, when given facts they understand, will act not only in their self-interest, but also in the interest of society. I believe that education is a lifelong process and the greatest university is the home. That my success as a teacher is proportional to those qualities of mind and spirit that give me welcome entrance into the homes of the families that I serve. I believe in intellectual freedom to search for and present the truth without bias and with courteous tolerance to the views of others. I believe that extension is a link between the people and the ever-changing discoveries in the laboratories. I believe in the public institutions of which I am part of. I believe in my own work and in the opportunity I have to make my life useful to humanity. Because I believe these things, I am an extension professional. Yep. So, I, Kansas, that's my home state. So, kind of neat to be able to them. So my wildflower reflection from the talking pinstamen is this thing, because we believe these things, we are extension professionals. Okay, third reason, got to move along here. Okay, we survive change to thrive. Okay, how does that work? Well, we need a foxglove, because quite frankly, we've got to be foxy to survive change to thrive, okay? Now, just think of your grandparents and your great-grandparents, what they went through, World War I, the Depression, World War II, even the great flu pandemic. Okay, on the right are my uh, grandparents my, on my mom's side, and on the left are uh, dad's parents. Which one do you think they were all taken at the same age at their 50th anniversary? Which one looks the oldest? Lady with her white hair? Uh-huh. Well, she had smallpox when she was 21, and her hair turned white and stayed white. But you know, I think the real reason? She had 16 kids. <laughs> Two sets of twins in those. Okay. But they survived and they thrived, and that's what we're trying to do. And I'm thinking of the leadership shifts I've had. University presidents, nine of them. Directors of Extension, nine of them. Department heads, eight of them. And county agents, yes, I count them as leadership. Because when I got to Montana, I had a guy by the name of Merle Lida take me aside. And Merle said, Marsha, we want you to do estate planning. I went to the director and said, you've hired the wrong person. Because I don't know estate planning. I mean, I, I had my home ec degree, I had my consumer education, and Carl Hoffman said, you're capable of learning. So I did. Okay, and President Crisado, oh, Cody, don't tell her this. I refer to her as Dr. Foxy. Okay, because one of the neat things she came up with was the Pure Gold Awards. I mean, we went through presidents that never knew what we did in extension, 
But she comes up with a Pure Gold Award. And look at that. We've got three people from Montana that have been nominated and received the Gold Award. We've got Ronnie Baker, you know, one of our co-chairs. We've got Jane Woolery, who's our new Creative 4-H Foundation. And Carrie Hayes is my assistant that keeps me on the straight and narrow. And she came up with this thing celebrating milestones in service. So in other words, every five years, she's going to recognize people. That wasn't done before. As a matter of fact, the very first time she did it, hardly anybody came because they kind of thought it was Twinkie. And, you know, you got those naysayers out there who say, oh, it's just for a number of years you've been there. Okay, but this time I went standing room only because it's become a tradition. She even has excellence in service for these fancy awards that people get. And sometimes they get money, like $1,000. And yes, we have extension receiving those. We've got Jennifer. We've got Michelle. Michelle's back there doing outstanding programming. Yay. And then she talked about her food mission, you know, going the thing. And Kate, um, Cody comes up, and, and they make ideas on what they're going to do. And she talked about all those. And, and that's so neat. And I think of the changes. Here I was in 1974, handwriting a newsletter, giving it to a secretary. Oh, whoopee. Okay, 1980s, overhead transparencies. <laughs> I want those. They were ugly. They were difficult. They were boring. Then in the 80s, you know, Leroy would probably say Marsha Gatting was about the last person to get a computer. Um, yeah, I like to make sure other people are doing them and know what they're doing, and then I'll get one. And then PowerPoint came out. And PowerPoint allows me to be creative in my presentations. And I want to change them to meet the needs of each county that I'm in. And then I got two screens. They had to talk me into it. Couldn't do without them now. And then uh, the Extension Foundation has talked about AI and chat GPT. Oh, boy. We're in for a lot of challenges on that one, but OK. And what has influenced the biggest programming you've had? In the last 10 years, COVID. Okay. I had 32 programs that were canceled as of March 30th, that I was gonna, or March 20. And I was upset because I was going to counties and towns that I hadn't been in for a while. You know, Sunburst, Montana, Freud, Montana. And I'm going, what am I going to do? So we found that we had a virtual platform that we didn't know we had. Each of us extension people had a room. Whoa. And so we got excited. And this gal here, Emily, well, I call her a gal, younger than I am, OK? And she said, Marsha, I will handle the technology if you will do the subject matter. Talk about relieved. I was really relieved. And she did it. We had two C tips. And I want to show you how primitive it was. I had a sheet behind me. It wasn't even in focus. <laughs> it was awful, but we grew. You know, next we did six extension agents, and we had what we call Mont Guide Mondays. Oh, that was a lot of fun to talk about Mont Guides, which are our fact sheets. Then we had Fabulous Fridays. And Fabulous Fridays is being uh, co-sponsored by our Montana 4-H Foundation and our 4-H uh, Youth Development. Okay, and I had Kim, she was my co-host on one of the times we did it. And then we had Mandy Reed out here somewhere. She was, aha, Mandy, she was a co-host as well. So we would get together and practice, and then we would offer the sessions, and they were great. Then we've got special guests that we had last time, and Jane Woolery, our new Dynamic 4-H Foundation Director, came up with the idea of interviewing alumni from the 4-H program. And that worked out just super, super, super. That was great. We like uh, to get an idea of where Montanans are participating from. So my secretary puts on a uh, red thing, OK? Um, what that does is tell me where I need to do some marketing. Yeah. And we also had out-of-staters, which is always kind of fun to have people think, you know, even Alaska. I have no idea what time it was. Then we have Maryland. I was never able to go to Maryland's wonderful personal finance seminars. And because they went 
to virtual, I was able to participate. And then we've got to Tennessee with their Money Minutes, the education that they're doing that way. And Ann Berry, who got the Ruby Award last year, they are working. Yo, thank you. Okay, moving along. And <laughs> Parkinson's. I mean, here was a great webinar. And of course, I wanted to watch because Parkinson's is another, fa or another uh, thing of Alzheimer's. Great, great. Iowa State did that one. Okay, so we have Minnesota. They're still doing webinars. Wonderful, wonderful webinars. And they have teamed up and they're getting wellness points for participants that participate in that program. You know, incentives work, we know that. So V. Foxy survived to, sur or, um, well, what did I say? Survive, change to thrive, okay? Then we've got the fourth reason why extension is the bestest. Mentors and collaborators, or inside or outside, it could be either way. And I have a pink owl's clover, very wise. That means that they have, Eleanor Anderson was the specialist from Kansas, who took me aside and said, Marsha, if you get into state plan estate planning, they'll never let it go. She was doing that towards the end of her career, and I'm finding the same thing. 40 years later, what program do I get asked to do? Estate planning. Only I have a whole bunch of estate planning programs. Okay, the father of estate planning, Neil Harrow from Iowa State. As a young person, I wrote him and said, do you have any materials you could share? What he did was send a whole box. And some of this stuff was charge items, and he didn't even charge me. Oh, he was great. And then Barb O'Neill from New Jersey. Anybody here from New Jersey? Yay, New Jersey. Well, I hope you know Barb. She is the specialist specialist. If there's anything new going on like AI, chat, GPT, she's the one. And she is my mentor. And then we've got Marlene Stump. How many of you here have done Who Gets Grandma's Yellow Pie Plate? Yeah. I was honored to be able to do a mock guide for us in Montana on that topic. And you know, we tend to think that mentors are older than us. And guess what? I discovered this summer, not necessarily is that true. At 4-H Congress, they had a couple of people that are ambassadors, and they were giving speeches, OK? Uh, it's a retiring thing that they do. And Makaya Cook, she was marvelous. Getting up there, she didn't have any PowerPoint. She was just up there doing her thing. But one of the things she shared was that she has to do stuff. And she got elected and asked her leader, do I have to sit up front anymore? Or now that I am. She says, have to. You know, and there I am. She's asking the question. And the leader looked at her point blank of the eye and said, have to, you get to. And I was sitting there. And what was I doing? Have to, have to. I got to give a Ruby speech. I have to, have to. And Micaiah turned me around. I get to. I get to share with you my passion, my love for extension. I still wouldn't be working if I didn't love the job. OK, and then so thank you, Micaiah Cook, for becoming my mentor this year. And then it must have been the night of inspiration, because here comes the next retiring ambassador, and she's talking about impact of forage in her life. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking impact, impact. We talk about impact. But her point was the people. The people that we meet, and maybe we say, you look really good. Or the encouragement that I have had to do this program. You just, that's impact, and you might not know it. So Abigail Curtis became my mentor in 2023. We also have ESP folks, right? Okay, life members. They have knowledge, they have enthusiasm, dedication, loyalty, understanding, commitment, dependability. Life members, stand up and be recognized. Come on, let's talk about the life members, our mentors, our collaborators. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this is the thing. Appreciate your mentors and tell them before they're gone. Okay? Fourth reason 
collaborators. Okay, uh, sugar bowl. That's representing my collaborators. Sugar bowls on a bad hair day. Thank you for laughing. Those of you that got it, good. Okay, State Bar of Montana. I have cooperated with them since 1980. They are marvelous. I also have Wisdom Wednesdays, AARP. AARP is a great organization to collaborate with. They know how to get a crowd. We've got teletown halls. What are those? Phone calls. They call out robo-wise and get people on the phone. Now, would I sit there with the phone in my ear for 50 minutes? No, but people do. They tell me I have quite the following. 2,453 and 22. I don't know what it was in 23. Moving along, then they also provide funding. We've got AERP that's helping us with our storybooks. I got stories books back there in the silent auction. Uh, the school of law, oh, they're wonderful. I've got uh, Dean Eck, uh, he used to be the dean. He's helping write different kinds of publications. They use Mont Guides in their classes. They distribute the Mont Guides when they're doing programs out in the state. Montana Community Foundation, okay? You have community foundations in your areas, each of your states. They came to me and said, hi, Marsha. We would like to uh, give you some money to do estate planning programs. Okay, I'll take it. And we went out and we've done a lot of programming team-wise. Here is the study at home course we offered this year. And my point with this one is, yeah, I've done a study at home course before, but I was doing 16,000 other things at the same time. And if it hadn't been for our Joel Tansy Moore um, and Carrie, that wouldn't have happened. I could do, so you could come up with ideas, but you need the support of your staff to be able to do it. And I had that and I'm thrilled. Okay, who else? Uh, Wish Management Center, Ag West, we're doing an Alzheimer magazine for farm ranch pe uh, people because that's the audience that I feel the Alzheimer Association and the Alzheimer Foundation has missed. So my wild, wildflower reflection from the sugar bowl is, um, and fifth reason, so I need to get there. We value our volunteers, don't we? You know, green gentian represents that. And if you think uh, this particular flower takes 20 years to bloom, uh, if you squint your eyes, it looks like the 4-H emblem. So we really value our uh, volunteers. Here's what uh, University of Nevada did. We've got University of California with their master uh, money managers, Hillsboro in Florida. They've got a master money. And we've got master gardener programs in many of our states, Montana included. Okay, so recognize them. Okay, the idea was I was gonna do a bonus thing, but I am way over my time limit. So we won't do that. Uh, we will uh, do that another time. But I do want to express, again, my appreciation to all of you for the work that we're doing out there. I'm a part, you're a part. We are having impact on the people of Montana and the rest of the states. So again, I thank you for this award. I sincerely, really, really feel honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. How inspirational. Thank you so much, Marsha. And if you'll stay here on the stage with us, please. The ruby pin bears our traditional Greek letters of Epsilon Sigma Phi along with a single ruby gemstone, plus a diamond for each 10 years of service to extension. This year's pin has five diamonds. According to the International Gem Society, a ruby's deep red color has encouraged strong associations with a life-sustaining fluid of a similar color, a fitting symbol for those who have sustained our profession and our association. Marcia, you have encouraged and mentored so many in their roles with Extension and with ESP leadership. And from your words today, you continue to inspire and connect with us all. It is truly my honor and pleasure to present to you the symbol of the Ruby Award.
<laughs> okay, we now have a few announcements. The tradition of the President's Key was started many years ago to commemorate the service of the national president and the leaders around the country that they get to work with all year long. One of the special aspects of this tradition is that members at the ESP National Conference get to sign the back of the President's Key. As you go through this week, please take a moment to sign the key and to thank Daphne Richards for her many years of local, state, and national service with ESP. Okay, and that key's right there in the back. Don't forget, you can make a donation in honorarium of our fabulous president to honor her year of service. So far, our conference donations for the ESP Development Fund total $1,669. Okay, the silent auction has some wonderful items. Bidding is currently open, as Marcia shared with us earlier. Lovely, lovely items over there. Please make sure that you register for the auction and get a bidder number. And orange, orange dot on your doohickey. That's right, right in the back, right where we see ESP, right there in the back. Um, if the person who has number 131, please check in with the table after the section so that we make sure that there might have been a duplicate. We want to make sure that we have that straight. Okay, and because we have a new conference tradition launch, launched last year in Branson, it's called the ESP Opportunity Drawing. This year we have two chances to win. The prizes are fantastic. One item is the $100 lottery ticket tree full of $1 scratcher tickets. Nice stuff. The other drawing item is a free registration to the 2024 ESP National Conference in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Now there's a prize. Okay, tickets are $10 per ticket or $15 for $100. That's a great value. We'll hold the drawing during our silent and live auction on Wednesday night. You can get your ESP tickets at the registration desk. Next up on our schedule, we have the poster session with the authors present, and that's on our second and third floors. We also have our Western Wear and Gear and Four Winds Quilting Life, Life member tours. It's all, we now have concurrent sessions after that, and the UCDA Affinity Group, and finally the State's Night Out. Please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.